but she caught it. Happy Saturday, everyone. So we are getting ready to head out a um, little ways away from us for our local meat goat association is the Claremont County Meat Goat Association that I am a member of. And they put on a show every year at the fair um, for the kids. And in doing so, they have to raise money. Um, that provides us with paying for all of the uh, supplies that we need, the, the prizes, the ribbons for the kids when they're showing. And then every kid gets a prize at the end of the show, at the end of the day. Um, and we try to do that by providing the prizes are all things for showing goats. So it can be, you know, bags of feed. It can be a, wa a muck wagon. It can be a uh, pitchfork. Um, supplements, uh, feed content troughs, uh, the uh, hoof trimmers, all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm going to take you with us because one of the members, um, their family owns a greenhouse. So that's where we're going to be having a cookout today in order to raise some money. So I'm going to take you with us. Mm-hmm. Harvesting my bok choy. I let it go a little longer than I wanted to. Um, a few of the heads out there, which I haven't grabbed yet, actually had, we're starting to get some flowers on them. So I want to get them used before they go to seed and then they start getting really bitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it, wash it, trim it up, and I'm actually going to cut it into about one to two inch pieces. I'm going to stick it inside of this bowl because what we're making today is kimchi. So here it is, all of my bok choy cleaned up and chopped. And in order to make kimchi, you only need a few simple ingredients. One is salt. So we use Himalayan pink salt. We do not use iodized salt here. Um, you can also use the Redmond real salt, crushed red pepper flakes, and fresh garlic and ginger. And I mean cloves of garlic, not the diced stuff in a jar. So I like to mince mine up smaller. You could just cut it into slivers, but I like to make mine into, um, you know, to chop it. So I use my little mini chopper and chop it up into finer pieces. You could add um, carrots or onion to this as well if you wanted to. Um, you could even add radish. That would be, you see there's a little brown spot. So I'm kind of just double checking myself, making sure that there's no, see that? We don't want that. So. I'm just double checking, making sure that there is no spots, even though I cleaned really well. And make sure I didn't miss anything. Then we're gonna go ahead and get to um, mixing it up. So the first thing I'm gonna add is my salt, and I'm adding two um, tablespoons. That sounds like a lot of salt, but it's not. And then we're going to add about a tablespoon of the crushed red Pepper. Now you can add more crushed red pepper if you want to, if you like it more spicy, um, totally up to you. It's not going to hurt anything. The uh, I do a one inch um, chunk of ginger peeled and then I mince it up 
with the garlic. And I like lots of garlic in mine, so there's five nice big cloves in here. And then all I'm gonna do is just toss it really good. And then I'm gonna let it set for a couple of hours on the counter. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the salt to um, work in and pull the liquid, start pulling liquid out of the bok choy. Um, once it's done that, I will show you how I pack it in jars and then um, we're going to leave it sit on the counter for about 7 to 10 days is about where I want it. Um, you can leave it a little bit longer. Um, you can leave it 2-3 weeks and let it ferment longer. It's going to be have more of a sour flavor if you let it the longer you go. All right, we're going to let this sit and we'll come back to it in a little bit. All right, here it is. It's been several hours later. And if you can look, you can just see that there's a lot of liquid in there that it's pulled out and how wilted down. This bowl was mostly full. So now we get to put it in mason jars. Okay, so we've got a clean wide mouth jar. We have our clean pickle pebble from Mason Pops and our silicone pickle pipe from, again, Mason Pops. And a wide mouth ring that we're going to use to attach it. And what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna start stuffing this into the jar. And we're gonna pack this in as tight as we can. I think my masher, my trout masher, which would work really well for this too, is uh, dirty right now from the last time I was from making sauerkraut this past week. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to take all of what's left as well as all the liquid and we're going to pour that down in there. Now, after we get this all packed in here, I'm going to add some filtered water. You need filtered water. You do not want to use chlorinated water. Chlorine will kill all that good bacteria stuff you're going to have going on. Okay? So we're going to add that until it just covers, and we're not quite there, so I am going to definitely have to add some water. So I'm going to go ahead and get my water. We're going to just add this until it just covers it. And then we're going to add our pickle pipe. And there's an indented side and a flat side. The indented side goes down. Oops. So that's going to hold everything down in there. Then, just out of habit, I'm going to clean the rim off so I can place the pickle pipe on it. And then I'm going to sit this out of direct sunlight. I'm going to sit on the back of my counter over here. And we'll come back in about a week to 10 days and do a taste test with you guys. 